Hi there, my name is Vanessa Simpkins. Welcome to this video. I wanted to wish you all an amazing and prosperous, happy, joyous, love-filled 2012. Wishing you moment after moment of delicious synchronicity and expansion and freedom this year. Lots and lots of love and laughter and prosperity. And I thought I'd start off the new year by creating this really quick video about the five tips on how to create your breakthrough to success this year. Five tips on how to create your own breakthrough. And I decided to do this video blog because it's New Year's, you know, we're making all these intentions, it's a new career, it's a new love, it's, you know, to lose the weight, it's to have more consciousness, to be more aware in everything that you do, and I really want you to succeed. So I'm going to be sharing with you these five tips on how to overcome your inner resistance so that you can create your outer magnificence, because it all starts from the inside. So 2012, it's here. Um, you know, they said we're gonna die, and we're not dead yet. We're, we're still here, we're still all breathing. This, I think, is one of the most amazing times in history where we're called for this grand awakening. It's an amazing transformational time, and some people are resisting the change. It's not so easy. So the first of the five keys is healing the victim archetype. Healing the victim archetype. You know, we're not taught in society how to claim our power and own it and be responsible. We're taught how to, you know, project, lay blame outside of ourselves and stay in this kind of comfy, cozy, you know, victim role. And Lord knows I, you know, raise my hand, I, I was addicted to my victim. Um, I broke free. I wrote a book about it from bankrupt to making $900 a day selling mops. And now I teach and mentor entrepreneurs how to let go of their inner resistance and break through success. So the first key is healing the victim archetype because everything that's happening to us, and this is a key shift, it's a, it's a shift in perception, is to realize that everything that happens to us is for our best interest, it's for our best good, it's the divine inviting us into healing. And in every moment, especially those moments where you have these big massive wake-up calls where, yeah, we could blame the other person and yeah, we'd be right, but we'd stay in our mess, right? It's always an invitation to, um, to heal and to step back into that loving space, into our happiness, which is, you know, what we're really all about. So just know that everything happening to you is happening for a reason. It's for your best good. So the second key is letting go of the past. Letting go of the past. Easier said than done, right? We have all of these experiences, all of these emotions that get stuck inside our body. And it's especially important now, you know, with the new year, we're making all these intentions to create all these grandiose things. It's really important to create space for that to happen. And so letting go is one of the most important things you can do to create space for then these new intentions to, to take place in your life and manifest. The third key is ending the emotional roller coaster. Ending the emotional roller coaster. Now, I talk a lot about emotions because that's really where your power is. And if your emotions are tied up, you know, if you're freaking out all the time, uh, for example, you know, my mother used to be great at pushing my buttons, right? She'd push a button and <laughs> I'd take off. Um, and my emotions ran me most of the time instead of the other way around. So a lot of the work that I do is helping you, helping my clients really manage their inner game and their inner emotions and their emotional world. Because we have emotions which are actually become like physical, tangible things. You know, after a while they get compressed in our body and they block our organs from function, we become ill. Or we have these same things happening over and over and over again in our lives, the same recurring patterns. So whenever we have, you know, an up, some kind of emotional event, there's four ways that we process it. So the first way is to suppress it. This is the most common way. We don't want to deal with it. Society doesn't, doesn't teach us or honor being vulnerable or authentic, right? So we try and be, you know, 
good little girls and boys don't cry and we stuff it and stuff it and stuff it until we become ill. Until we can't take it anymore, until our backs are against the wall and then we have to do something about it. So don't wait until you have to do something about it. The second way we deal with our emotions is that we express them. We have these bursts of anger or these flare-ups, these uncontrollable rages and the emotion comes up and out. The third way we deal with emotions is by escaping them. This is the most, I think, one of the most common ways. You know, we watch movies, we eat food, drugs, alcohol, sex, you name it, to escape feeling our feelings. But what happens is that you come back from the escape to your consciousness and you still have the same problems. So it's a vicious cycle. And the fourth way is ending that vicious cycle, and it's by releasing the emotions. Releasing the emotions helps you again create that space and it helps you master your emotions. And I'm going to take you through a quick little exercise that I do with some of my clients. I'm going to take you through something called release technique. You can find out more about it on thereleasetechnique.com. It was invented years ago by a man named Lester Levinson. A fabulous technique, transformed my life. And it's uh, one of the techniques I share with my clients. So I'll take you through a little bit of it now so you can get a feel for it, so you can see how you really are the master over your emotions. So I want you to bring to mind something or someone that bothers you. Something or someone that bothers you right now. Just bring them into your mind, or a situation that you want to change. Got it? Good. So now I want you to close your eyes and put your head down close your eyes and put your head down and disengage your mind. You can't let go with the mind that created it. So close your eyes, put your head down, it disengages the mind, gets you into your feeling centers from where you can release from. And I want you to bring up this situation that's bothering you, this thing you want to change, this person, this uncomfortable event in your life. And just notice that it brings up an unwanted energy in your stomach or your chest area. Notice it brings up an unwanted feeling in your stomach or your chest. And I want you to stick an imaginary tube, an imaginary tube into this feeling in your stomach or your chest. And just like a chimney, when it makes a fire and you open up the hatch and you let the smoke out, I want you to let, see if you can let this emotion pass through the tube. Just let it come up, come up and out. It wants to pass through. And more. And even more. Now think of this unwanted situation, this event, this person in your life that's causing you trouble, something you want to change. And see if you can call up some more of that unwanted energy in your stomach or your chest area. This clutching, resistant feeling. And just see if you can stick a tube in it and let it pass through, let it bubble up. It's not good or bad, it's just a phenomenon. It wants to come out. And if you're having a problem with this, just visualize a window. Stick a window on this feeling center and then open up the window and let it out. And more. And even more. And now check in with yourself and see if you feel any lighter. You can open your eyes. It's a quick little technique there. And you should feel a little bit lighter. This goes to show you that you do really have control over your emotions. It's just energy. Now what the mind tries to do is, you know, take you into the past or take you into the future, beating yourself up about something that you can't figure out or, you know, worrying about something, you know, that's not even happened yet in the future. And so through this technique, we take apart all of these take apart your mind and we take out these emotions. It's kind of like a Kleenex box. You keep pulling them up, pulling them up, pulling them up until there's none left. And then when you're empty, you come back to the love. You come back to 
this lighter feeling that you're probably feeling right now, a little bit lighter, right? Just check in with yourself. So what this does is allows you to come back to the natural state of being, your happiness, your love. That's what we're all searching for anyways, right? And when you do that, then you're no longer resisting the thing that you're wanting. It's the wanting that creates the resistance, the wanting the new career, the wanting the love, the, the wanting of things to be different that keeps them in your mind and then through the law of attraction recreates them over and over and over again. So this is actually the secret to using the law of attraction. And you can find out more about it on my website, fullpowergrowth.com, or like I said again, at thereleasetechnique.com. So that's key number three, is ending the emotional roller coaster, or taking your power back. Step number four is experiencing consciousness in the now. Experiencing consciousness in the now. So once you get rid of all these emotions, you're right back in the present moment, which is where the power is. Right? You're no longer you know, fiddled around with like a puppet. You can now choose what you're wanting to create. Like Eckhart Tolle says, the power you know, exists in the present moment. And be very conscious about the energy that you're creating with. Right? If you're creating through fear or greed or lust, that's what you'll get back. When you come and you access the present moment, you can now choose what you want to create through love, through creativity. Right? It's not coming from these other emotions, these other lower emotions, because we've gotten rid of them. So that's step number four, playing around and accessing the present, um, the consciousness and the now. And the fourth, the fifth key, to breaking through to success this year is to get mentored, to get coached, or to invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. You're never going to go wrong with it. Um, it's the only way I got to be where I am today. I did not do it alone. I got mentored and coached. I went to several, several, several seminars and coaching programs and books. And I'm a continuous student of higher learning. And I encourage you to do the same because when you do, you start building momentum. It's like a freight train, right? You start building momentum and then you're just unstoppable. So I encourage you to get mentored, get coached, or be a student of continual learning. You will never, never, never serve you wrong. Um, you will always, always grow and grow and grow. And that's what I'm doing. I'm always learning so they can share with my community all of these amazing transformational things that I'm learning. So those are my five keys to help you create a breakthrough to success this year. I wish you love, 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 prosperity, abundance, everything your heart desires this year. I really hope you enjoyed this video and these tips. And if you want to learn more, you can visit my website and catch some more free tips there at fullpowergrowth.com. You can sign up for uh, my newsletter, The Breakthrough to Success. I give weekly tips on Fridays, very short, quick, concise tips in your inbox. Um, and you'll find out more about different energy techniques and processes. And you can also pick up a copy of my book, From Bankrupt to $900 a Day Selling Mops, on my website. Uh, when you do, it comes with over $500 worth of bonuses, really cool audios and interviews that I've done with different energy healers, spiritual leaders and such to help you break through to success. So my name is Vanessa Simpkins. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I wish you full power in success this year. Bye-bye.